good morning andhra pradesh uh, welcome to all the teachers headmasters uh, deputy dios dios and all the state officials who are watching this uh, uh, interactive webinar uh, on the special topic on basics of a spoken discourse in in language வெல்கம் to day to uh, clip uh, uh, clip to spoken english series I welcome you all uh, then today uh, we have uh, mr suman bandi as resource person as you are uh, well aware of suman bandi sir sir is a teacher trainer he is from regional institute of english bangalore he has a known uh, for his training uh the today's topic is very interesting topic let us see that is basics of a spoken discourse in a language so with this uh, suman bandi sir welcome to you for this uh, today's session uh, please uh, namaste please continue yeah. your session sir okay good morning dear teachers i hope you are all doing well i welcome you to uh, second series of clip 2 uh, Uh, training programs which is the spoken english uh, uh, series and uh, today is a webinar 2 and today's topic for discussion will be basics of a spoken discourse in a language so as all of you know the entire series this entire series will be focusing on uh, understanding the important aspects of uh, spoken english and uh, Well, these sessions uh, are prepared with objectives uh, of uh, enhancing our uh, spoken english uh, capabilities so as all of you know yesterday uh, shobha madam has introduced you to the concept of uh, spoken english why spoken english is important and uh, some important facts that we need to know if we want to improve our spoken english and uh, uh, what should be our attitude when we are going to improve or when we have this goal of improving the uh, spoken english so today onwards we'll get into uh, details of uh, various aspects of uh, spoken english so in that uh, part uh, uh, today's session is going to focus on basics of a spoken discourse in a language so today's session we are going to look at uh, all those basic aspects and various features of spoken english which are important for us uh, this awareness uh, uh, is important for us when we have to improve or when we have an objective our spoken english so the understanding of these basics can help us be better learners and uh, better teachers of uh, spoken english so what are we going to look at uh, today's session so in today's session we'll talk about uh, first what is a discourse because in order to understand uh, how spoken discourse can be learned first and it is different from other discourses it is important that we understand what is a discourse and uh, what are the types of discourse and uh, what is the difference between speech and writing though both are modes of communication what is the difference are there any differences between speech and writing if there are any differences knowing these differences can help us uh, learn uh, uh, spoken english better or help us learn to be better speakers and uh, we are also going to talk about what are the notions of grammaticality and accent and uh, what is the relevance of uh, this understanding in trying to improve or uh, our spoken english capacities and we are also going to talk about uh, the aspects like fluency and accuracy and what are the implications of understanding these concepts uh, while learning or teaching spoken english and uh, what are paralinguistic features of speech so what are these features and how do these features help us 
in uh, being better speakers. So how can these paralinguistic features help us in communicating better while speaking? And apart from paralinguistic features, are there any features of spoken English which makes it different from uh, writing? And uh, how can the understanding of these features uh, help us be better speakers? And lastly, we are going to look at uh, what is called grammar of uh, spoken English. So is there anything called grammar of spoken English? Is it different from the traditional grammar that we know? So these understandings, these awareness, the awareness of understanding, all these different aspects uh, can help us uh, uh, learn our spoken English uh, in a better way. We are not only learners of English, but we are also teachers of English. So the understanding of all these aspects can help us be better speakers. So all these things, various aspects that we are going to, to discuss today are not directly relevant uh, for us as users of uh, language. Some of these uh, aspects like paralinguistic features, for example, are directly related to us as teachers and learners. So an understanding of these aspects uh, uh, can definitely- uh, Our dynamic director of CRT has just joined. Okay, sir, please, should I stop please, sharing the screen? Yeah, please pause uh, your presentation for a while. Yes. I request uh, Dr. B. Pratap Ritigaru, director of CRT. Uh, Pratap Riti, sir, I request you to kindly address the viewers. Uh, thank you. Andarki Namaskar Mande. Mare e Covid Mare pandemic period Lagoda Marki Rasta Vaptanga Upada Landurgoda Chala Utsanga Marki e training program ni and the is codam one lakh teachers of Paiga Marki the participation of those like in Kantaki Mari Molaka. Vetrisilu Medangaru, Special Officer and Director Simet. Medangaru Chala Kinga Mark Abjurjason, teachers Kedu Piavo, Marpilla Kedi Pau from the Udjason to a big course material also, Marie Tennis Schedule also, Yap also, National and International Marki Best Practices Nuda and Nuda Mana Vetrisilu Medangar Gamunchi. He apps of matter you put in money. Yes, yeah, the other chess sooner, even you would have Maku Mundundi, Marki Madangaru, and then this town are very Madangarki, Marki teaches Marki with them to progress to Munduku Zautunai character Malante, Maku, a British Madangaru, Maku, a Chala, a Procha Agarangaunaru. I think I'm a commissioner I say special thanks to Suman Bandigaru. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Pratap Reddy, sir, uh, director of SCRP. Andarni uh, address Chedam Pratheko in the 20th and Yadal Telijasun Namu. Alake. Yes, teachers in lockdown time low. Machi Karakraman attend Autunaru and Ilanti Karakraman design chase, what ni execute chase, Malan to Alandar Nibra Tiskochi, a chairman is shippy, Mandarki, a Manchmanchi resource persons to Machi topics ship is to Naru and the entire credit goes to Mana Miss Vertiselvi, Madam, IAS officer, special officer. So, Madam Garki, on behalf of all the teaching community, we uh, will take one at twenty. Then, you are the Namaskar of the religious term. Alake, Commissioner of School Education, Sri Vich, Chinaba Virabatur Garki, Principal Secretary Garki, Adimu Suresh Mohana, Suresh Karo, Hanbul, Minister Garki, Alake, Government of Andhra Pradesh, and the Kupada, then you are the religious too. 
sir please uh, continue your presentation sir thank you all back to the session uh, uh, i'm really happy that uh, about uh, the fact that the andhra government is taking all such wonderful initiatives in order to help teachers during this lockdown so i also thank uh, director pratap reddy garu for actually uh, referring to me and also vetri selvi madam and in general thank the government of andhra for taking such wonderful initiatives and also we are happy to meet teachers to help us then uh, as we can so thank you sir and uh, we'll be back to the session so as i was saying uh, this is what uh, we'll be discussing in today's uh, session so we look at all these various aspects of uh, speech and the speech as a discourse and uh, as i said some of these features are directly useful for us which we can practice and uh, which we can uh, practicing which we can enhance our spoken english for example paralinguistic features of speech while some others are not directly relevant and helpful to us but an understanding and awareness of awareness of these aspects can definitely help us uh, uh, in strategizing in uh, planning better strategies both for teaching uh, a spoken english as well as to improvise our own uh, spoken english so first uh, we if we have to understand all these aspects uh, first uh, we'll start by discussing what is a discourse so before learning or understanding how spoken english is very important and what are the features of uh, spoken english as a discourse it is important that we understand the meaning of discourse so what is a discourse i'm sure uh, most of you are aware of this term most of you would have at least heard of this uh, term called discourse why am i saying this this is because uh, uh, very recently in the last few years uh, a new methodology or new approach in terms of teaching language called uh, discourse oriented pedagogy or dop especially mainly english teachers must be aware of this uh, uh, term has been introduced dop has been advocated uh, in the last uh, few years as a better approach as a more comprehensive approach when it comes to the teaching of language so in this context i'm sure uh, most of you are aware of this uh, uh, term called discourse so what is a, a discourse in order to understand this term discourse better we'll first have to look at the structure of a, a language so what is the structure of a language right what is the hierarchy of a language if you can see uh, here this picture talks about various levels of analyzing a language analyzing the structure of a, a language so on the left hand side as you can see this uh, is what refers to levels of structures on the right hand side uh, levels of uh, analysis or the technical terminology used here so these technical words are not that important my focus is not going to be on these technical words but rather i want you to focus on the left hand uh, Uh, column left side uh, column that is levels of structures so what are we talking about here what is the structure of a language all languages have a, a certain structure they start from something and then slowly they progress towards a, a higher level so what is the most basic unit of a language any language not just english what is the most basic element or component of a language it should be sounds exactly so sounds are the most basic element of any language when i say most basic what do i mean we cannot divide that uh, language into further components that is what refers to the most basic uh, component in a language so i'm sure all of you agree with me sounds uh, represent the most basic component of our language so all languages constitute the constitution of languages basically starts uh, from the sound level so if you look at the sound level are languages different from each other not really languages don't differ much in terms of sounds what do i mean by this all languages basically are constituted by uh, the combination of various sounds so at sound level all languages are more or less the same why do i say this 
for example if you take individual sounds like kh m mm, l mm when you utter these kind of individual sounds are also called as phonemes are languages different for example is the sound l is the sound is the sound l different from english to other indian languages no the sound would be the same with respect to all the languages if at all there would be some minute differences most of the sounds in all languages are same except for one or two uh, sounds for example if you take a sound in telugu or uh, in south indian languages uh, the second la right when you read the telugu alphabet or sounds you say la first la and then you say second ala ala for example kala when you say art for art kala we talk about the second la now do you think this sound exists in english no even most of the north indian languages also don't have this uh, uh, sound so this sound is different uh, in telugu and kannada from other indian languages and as well as english now when you take uh, when you compare indian for example especially south indian languages there is a sound called ra all of you know r ra right ra for example rampam right so this ra all of you are aware of this ra exists even in english but there is a second type of ra not the telugu bandi ra but there is a retroflex we call it in phonetics uh, retroflex ra which is unique only to malayalam and tamil speakers so most of the other language speakers in india also are not aware of this uh, uh, sound retroflex uh, ra for example you might have heard of the city in kerala called uh, k o z h i k o d e so how do you pronounce most of them who are not aware of this uh, sound will pronounce it as uh, cozy cozy cold so but actually the sound is a ra kori kod you are supposed to say kori kod and there's a place in kerala called alap alapuza people most people who are not aware of this sound pronounce it as alapura so this sound is unique only to malayalam and the tamil languages so this is how uh when it comes to sounds there's not much difference between languages most of the sounds are same except for uh, one or two variations next uh, sounds after sounds the next level of uh, language in terms of hierarchy are words now what about letters here it is mentioned here letters are letters really the combination of sounds yes but letters are just uh, code developed for writing purposes right so letters are not really prominent when we are looking at the basic structure of languages so letter is just a written code developed for written code what is most basic is sounds so sounds combine to form words now do individual sounds have meaning no so sounds combine to form words and meaning starts at the word so sounds combine to form words and words combine to form sentences so meaning as you can see basically starts uh, at uh, these two levels word level as well as sentence level so at the word level meaning is very very basic when you combine start combining words in order to frame sentences the meaning gets bigger and extended so sentences combine when sentences combine we call it connected speech or connected sentences so this in terms of uh, linguistics connected sentences this is what we refer to as discourse so now i hope uh, all of you have uh, a basic understanding of what is a discourse what is a discourse so the basic hierarchy of language is uh, sounds combined to form letters letters combined to form sentences sentences combined to form discourses so how can we now that we have got a basic understanding of uh, of course now this also leads us to two important approaches of looking at uh, languages uh, you must have heard words like top down approach bottom up approach so these words uh, can be applicable here also so while looking at language and uh, the structure of languages uh, these two are important for us as uh, teachers uh, teachers that is uh, uh, 
top down way of approach of looking at a language and bottom up approach of looking at a language so what is this bottom up approach of looking at a language bottom up approach looks at uh, uh, language constitution from the very basic elements from the bottom that is sounds so this approach looks at a language as a constitution of sounds the most basic units then slowly the focus shifts to words sentences and uh, discourses so traditionally our approach of teaching most of us as teachers uh, in the field of education we follow the uh, bottom up uh, approach where we that is why at the primary levels uh, uh, classes uh, we teach children we familiarize with them with sounds and then letters and then word formation slowly at higher level sentences and then finally we go to discourses we expose our students to various discourses but uh, what about this uh, top down approach so the top down approach looks first uh, uh, at the language as a whole right the holistic approach of looking at languages uh, in fact dop discourse oriented pedagogy or approach uh, is a way of looking at uh, uh, top down approach of uh, a language so this approach believes in uh, language uh, communication happens uh, through discourses so they expose the students to this approach believes in exposing students to lot of discourses so with this uh, we move on to what now we have got a basic understanding of discourse now we'll move on to look at how we can define uh, uh, discourse so the simplest way to define a discourse is it is the smallest act of communication now that you have understood uh, what makes a discourse so sentence sounds to words words to sentences sentences so anything beyond uh, a sentence level which is used for communication so it is the smallest act of communication discourse can be defined as the smallest act of communication so discourse is one of the four systems of uh, language the four basic systems vocabulary grammar and phonology as you can see discourse is the highest uh, in that all here vocabulary refers to words grammar mainly refers to sentences because most of the grammar operates at the sentence level and phonology refers to sounds whatever we have discussed basically is uh, put in a different way so discourse is one of the four systems and the most important system in the hierarchy or structure of a language so it is any piece of extended language uh, spoken or written which has unity and meaning and purpose so what are the examples of a discourse so an example of a discourse can be as simple as uh, a two exchange uh, dialogue like for example uh, hi and then uh, hi how are you fine thanks so this small uh, example of a dialogue to exchange dialogue can be an example of a discourse and also a very very long essay or uh, something such as uh, as long as a novel can also be an example of a, a discourse so let us look at uh, uh, various discourses in use right so different examples of discourses are dialogues conversations lecture paragraph essay novel advertisement letter so as you can see here we have to apply the basic definition of discourse so discourse is any piece of communication any piece of language which is beyond the sentence level so which means discourse are context of communication we use different discourses in different contexts of communication for example we use dialogues and conversations uh, between people in the spoken mode and the lecture as a discourse is used in the classroom by teachers and uh, lecturers uh, you might have heard uh, religious discourses right religious discourses are offered in temples mosques and in churches for example on certain days uh, religious discourses are offered by fathers or priests in churches uh, and then uh, some priests in temples or uh, uh, religious people in the mosques so a lecture that is delivered based on the philosophy of religion is called a religious discourse next paragraph paragraph is a basic discourse uh, when it comes to writing it is in fact a smaller part of a larger a paragraph can be a part of an essay 
A paragraph can be a part of a novel. A paragraph can be a part of a, a story. Now, advertisement. This is also a discourse. So, as you can see, discourses are various contexts uh, in which communication happens. So, basically, we can say uh, a statement. Communication has discourses. That is why, while learning a language or while teaching a language, it is important to understand this term discourse. So each discourse type is used uh, in each context. And as you can also see, these discourses are not same. The context varies, features also vary. Some of them we use in spoken context, some of them we use in written context, and some of them we can use in both the uh, contexts. For example, dialogues and conversations are uh, only used in the spoken uh, uh, context, right? Lectures are used, uh, are commonly uh, a part of the spoken context. Paragraph, essay, novel, advertisement, all these are uh, uh, a part of uh, both, uh, yeah, mainly written discourses. Advertisement, for example, advertisement can be a spoken discourse as well as a written discourse. So if you see an advertisement in a newspaper, uh, that is a written uh, context. If you see an advertisement uh, in the television, it is communicated basically through this oral medium or the spoken advertisement. So as all of you can see, the context varies for each of these discourses and also features vary. Right? For example, advertisement. You can't just... Uh, uh, talk about a product and say it is an advertisement, especially if you see it in a newspaper, right? It has some features to be followed. It should have a heading. It should, it may or may not have some pictures, some information about uh, the, you know, what is being advertised. Uh, take, for example, letters. We have formal letters, informal letters. So as teachers, all of you know the features of a letter. Features, technical features, like uh, structural features, like... Uh, Day, date, uh, you know, introduction, how to introduce, uh, how to uh, use uh, aspects like salutation, signature, uh, all these things, how to write aspects like subject uh, and reference in letters, emails, notices, for example, right? When a notice is issued, notice is always written uh, mode or written context. So there is a certain language that is used as a part of issuing notices. You can't just write a notice like, uh, to think like you uh, speak. So as you can see, discourses is used basically can be divided into oral and uh, written discourses. For all these contexts, uh, I mean discourses, uh, the context can vary as well as uh, the features. So students have to be exposed to all these discourses and they have to be taught the features of this discourse so that they communicate better. And this applies, this understanding applies to us also as teachers, because when we have to improve our spoken English, we have to select discourses, discourses that are a part of a spoken mode of communication so that we increase, so that we enhance our spoken English capabilities faster. So this is one important use of understanding are having this knowledge. So if you want to improve your spoken English faster, make sure you expose yourself to spoken discourses rather than uh, written discourses. So this is uh, an important understanding for us as learners of uh, spoken English. The same thing can be carried on to the classrooms as well. If we want our students to improve the spoken English, we need to expose them to a lot of uh, spoken discourses initially rather than uh, written discourses. Next. So this, yeah, this is a very important and basic step towards understanding different uh, features of uh, spoken English. So to understand uh, this, uh, we need to understand the basic differences between speech and writing. What are speech and writing? I'm sure all of you know that they are modes of communication. When we say we are using a language, what do we mean by it? We are either speaking or writing. There's no other way of communicating. Of course, there's a basic way of communicating without using a language, which we refer to as non-verbal communication. We are not talking about that. We are referring to verbal communication, communication using a language. So when you say you are using a language, 
there are only two ways in which you can use a language you either speak or you write so both are uh, ways of using a language because reading and listening are also ways of using language but then they are passive whereas these two refer to active active skills because we are producing a language here so these two are basically ways of using a language ways of communicating rather we can say so it's important that we understand these basic differences so that we can understand how speech is unique what makes uh, the spoken mode of communication or spoken discourse is uh, unique and different from writing it is very important so let us look at uh, some of uh, these important uh, differences and try and understand uh, what these differences are so speech is uh, primary everyone acquires it what do we mean by this statement this means that uh, spoken mode of communication is primary for all the languages so all languages are primarily spoken right they are not primarily written so first whoever is learning a language for whatever purposes first they need to learn the spoken mode only then you can go to the writing so not everybody learns to read and uh, write so reading and writing have to do with literacy uh, skills so only somebody when they are required in order to attain literacy for a particular purpose like education or a job people actually learn otherwise people just learn languages are learned or uh, primarily spoken next speech is spontaneous and repetitive yes speech is spontaneous and uh, sorry speech is spontaneous and unplanned so what do we mean by this spontaneous do you really have time to plan your speech when you are speaking most of the times no you just have to speak without a planning of course speech can be planned also in formal context for example if you are delivering a lecture if you are going to deliver a, a seminar if you are presenting a paper all these are formal contexts but most of the speech is informal so all this informal context speech is spontaneous you don't have time to plan your speech it is repetitive because you cannot plan it uh, it's also repetitive whereas uh, most of the writing is planned right you take a lot of time to plan what you want to write right you revise you redraft and finally you come out with the end product so speech is mainly informal and repetitive because you don't have time for planning it can also be repetitive so there's a tendency while speakers are talking uh, people are talking they repeat sometimes knowingly or unknowingly what they are going to communicate but writing is uh, mostly formal right that is why as you can see letter writing paragraph writing composition essay writing and uh, preparing notices uh, all these uh, most of these uh, written discourses are formal in nature like spoken english uh, our speech has dialect variations so this is something that can be understood even from our uh, very easily from our mother tongue uh, uh, telugu right so same language can have different uh, dialect variations based on a uh, region for example the telugu that is spoken in rayal seema is different in terms of certain words and also the accent the way you pronounce uh, compared to the telugu that is used in the coastal parts of andhra pradesh so this is similar to all languages including uh, english but writing generally doesn't have too many dialects uh, it has one standard dialect which follows the standard grammar structures and organizations organized next uh, speakers when you speak you pronounce whereas writers uh, spell so while speaking if you make a mistake in pronunciation that can lead to miscommunication somebody can miss and understand you similarly while you are writing you need to take care of your spelling so if your spelling is wrong if your grammar is wrong you can be misunderstood speakers use pauses and intonation right they know where to stop how to stop why to stop and then how to change their tone in order to assist their communication whereas writers use or take the help of punctuation marks like full stop double inverted commas hyphenation etc and aspects like stress tone rhythm and body language 
add meaning while uh, uh, speaking whereas when it comes to writing only writers can rely only upon language this is the most important difference i would uh, like to say or highlight here when you when it comes to speaking along with the language all these aspects like stress tone rhythm body language can also help a speaker in the process but when it comes to writing all these aspects is uh, there so the only option for the writer is the language the only tool so this is why grammar becomes very important the standards of grammar becomes very important uh, in the writer so the writer has to be dependent only on the language all these additional tools which are available in spoken english are not there to assist the writer speech can be reformulated what do we mean by this while you are speaking if you make some mistake you can get immediate feedback from your audience right your audience can let you know what is wrong with your speech through their body language or they can directly tell you so you can always reformulate it but when it comes to writing once you finish your writing and you post it whether it is a letter or email or just a post once you send it to your receiver you cannot reformulate it it is final so this flexibility it has and in speech meaning is primary whereas in writing along with meaning the standards following the standards uh, punctuation marks following the norms of writing the organized structures how to begin how to end all these become important in writing so this is how speech has certain advantages uh, when compared to the mode of writing so i hope all of you have uh, got now a basic understanding of uh, the different uh, uh, between speech the difference between speech and writing and how speech as a discourse has certain advantages to it compared to the writing mode next so these two are important uh, notions that we need to understand uh, because uh, uh, this has some functional application uh, when it comes to spoken discourses and written discourses so what are grammaticality and what is uh, grammaticality so grammaticality refers to the notion of language being grammatical or correct to certain extent now grammaticality what do i mean by grammaticality here is the notion of language being grammatical so the nature of language being grammatical so all of us know that grammar is very important whether it is english or any other language we need to be grammatical so that we can do we can be effective in communication but uh, normally when we think of grammar what comes to our mind is uh, you know some elements like what we teach in the classes parts of speech tenses prepositions you know active passive voice these kind of reported speech these kind of thing so i am not using the word grammaticality to refer to that basic uh, understanding of grammar i am using grammaticality to a, in a broader sense where grammaticality has to do with the notion of correctness so whatever uh, aspects related to correctness including pronunciation so just like your grammar has to be correct when you write something similarly your pronunciation aspects also have to be correct when you are speaking so i am including everything related to correctness into the uh, notion of grammaticality here i hope you understand grammaticality now better next acceptability what is this acceptability it is the extent to which one's language is accepted meaning correctness and uh, context now all of us follow grammar to certain extent when we speak or when we write in spite of that we make we make some grammatical mistakes so apart from these mistakes how far is our language meaningful right how far is our language meaningful so this decides the acceptability factor so when you speak to somebody when you communicate to somebody Uh, you make mistakes all of us do make mistakes some of us make more some of us make uh, less this aspect applies to even our mother tongue usage who's our mother tongue we still make some 
basic mistake sometimes we are aware sometimes we are not aware of these mistake but in spite of that you as a speaker when you speak or write when your receiver accepts your language with all your mistakes because it is meaningful because it is making sense so that refers to acceptability so these two are very very important notions which we are going to understand better by understanding uh, uh, it from a context now let us look at a practical context of communication here we have two contexts look at the first context mom called me today is a holiday please close the door so this is a context of communication where somebody is saying these utterances the second context run run snake coming no kill no kill please so carefully analyze the differences between these contexts of communication which one is more appealing to you which one would you more likely to accept from a meaning point of view or a communication point of view? i'm sure most of you would select context 2 why if you notice context 1 the sentences are fine the choice of vocabulary is fine the sentences are grammatically well constructed they are complete but if you notice they are not related to you know context so in a real life context uh, uh, this context is not so unified the grammar is definitely there but then what kind of context is this which is not unified which doesn't communicate with a purpose there is no common purpose for each of these sentences to be together here in this particular context but whereas in the second context you can see all these utterances they are not even complete sentences they are just phrases small words run run so this person doesn't have enough english he is not able to make sentences but he has enough language to communicate what is happening in that situation so this way we can say in a real life context if you compare both these uh, uh, contexts the second context where there are no complete sentences there is no grammar uh, formulation of grammar etc snake coming for example no kill no kill please so if you see uh, this person though he doesn't have enough language he is not aware of uh, you know proper grammar he has enough language to communicate so by comparing these two contexts uh, we can come to a conclusion we can understand that uh, what is more important uh, from a communicative point of view is it grammar or is it the meaning then definitely we should say meaning is more important than grammar so this is why this is why Uh, we need to apply this is why we need to understand the difference between grammaticality and acceptability so out of these both concepts though grammar context 1 is more grammatical has more grammaticality we still which is more acceptable in terms of uh, communication so context 2 will be more because uh, meaning wise it makes more sense than the context and this is why we need to understand that uh, acceptability plays a very important role rather than grammar grammar is definitely very important we are not saying grammar is uh, not important but it is uh, uh, comparatively important when it comes to acceptability where meaningfulness or uh, sense making is very very important similarly we need to look at uh, uh, to extend our understanding in a similar uh, Uh, context uh, we need to understand uh, what are fluency and uh, accuracy so flu fluency refers to one's comfort level in using a language so how comfortable you are in using a, a language that refers to fluency accuracy refers to correctness how correct is your language so again what are the implications of this understanding is uh, when we are learning when we are beginning to learn a language initially our primary goal is uh, uh, to be fluency fluency has to be our primary goal to attain the uh, fluency which means uh, how can we develop this comfort by learning by exposing ourselves constantly to uh, you know the context of english uh, the basic vocabulary by learning the basic vocabulary and basic sentences this level at the fluency level mistakes are common 
So can we ignore these mistakes and we continue to use language so that we gain that uh, fluency? So this understanding uh, is very, very important for us. Next, accuracy. So the secondary goal should be accuracy. Only after one attains certain level of fluency, we can focus on accuracy. So accuracy refers to the correctness of language. That is why uh, in the primary classes, initially fluency is the goal where we, sh we should ignore our learners' mistakes or errors, encourage uh, them to speak, continue to speak. So if we continue to speak, the fluency develops. And uh, accuracy can be a secondary goal which can be targeted at a slightly higher level. And that is why even at the school curriculum, we start teaching components of uh, pronunciation and grammar slowly at the high school level. Even for us as teachers, this understanding is very, very uh, important. Most of the teachers, I have heard from most of the teachers, sir, I know basic English, but my grammar is bad. So they hesitate to speak in English. They hesitate to open their mouth, though they have the basic and minimum and enough language. So this is, uh, this is why we need to understand that when it comes to spoken English, it's not always about grammar, right? It is not only about grammar, but what is called uh, meaningfulness. So we have to make sure whether we have the minimum language uh, to in order to express ourselves and if we have that, we should continue to use English so that we slowly develop uh, or reach certain fluency and then thereby we can focus on accuracy. So this understanding is very important for us as both teachers and learners. So this also can be understood by a practical classroom situation. Here, if you see a teacher is asking, why are you late? <coughs> So different students give different responses. If you notice Veena's response, right? It is perfectly grammatical and she also knows she has done a mistake. So she has apologized. So it's a perfect example of accuracy, accurate use of language. Look at Ravi's response. Though Ravi's response is uh, grammatical, he has made his language <coughs> unnecessarily lengthy and moreover on top he has not apologized so what is the use of uh, language being grammatical but which is not serving the purpose here Ravi has perfectly used grammar but then he has made it unnecessarily lengthy and also <coughs> sorry and also he forgot to apologize for his mistake so what kind of what is the purpose or use of such grammar so it is not always about grammar, but also about making sense, making knowing what to say, what not to say in a particular context. Now look at Gopi's response, finally. Gopi doesn't have enough language. So he says, rain falling, umbrella, no, sorry, ma'am. Though Gopi doesn't have enough language, I'm sure all of you, when you look at it from acceptability point of view, Gopi has minimum basic words so that uh, uh, he he can communicate in this context. So this is why understanding grammaticality and acceptability and understanding the implications of fluency and accuracy, what stage should we promote them are very, very, very important. <laughs> Next step. So as we discussed earlier, we are going to look at uh, some paralinguistic features. There are various features which make spoken English uh, unique or distinct. So among them, paralinguistic features are very, very important. So what are these paralinguistic features? These are the features which help uh, us speak, communicate better apart from uh, the language. So apart from the language that we use, these features in addition add meaning. If you, if you remember when we talked about the difference between speech and uh, writing, we talked about this. There are many features that help uh, uh, in spoken language uh, apart from the language when we are communicating. So what are these uh, uh, important things? Uh, these are things like body language, gestures, facial expression, tone, pitch, rhythm, accent, etc. So body language, in fact, is a very generic term. 
in fact gestures facial expressions also come into body language so today's session we are not going to focus on body language and related aspects all of us know that very very important we talked about the importance of this uh, especially when we talked about tpr if you remember in one of our previous uh, sessions so body language can uh, play a very important role in teaching and learning process in general in the communication process all all of us know that as one teachers so we are not talking about that uh, focusing on those aspects now in today's session but uh, some of the important uh, things that have direct relevance when spoken english are uh, uh, other paralinguistic features are tone pitch rhythm accent etc so all of you must have heard these uh, words in today's uh, session we'll just be introduced to these uh, sessions we'll have a basic understanding of these things and in further sessions uh, these aspects or these uh, things will be dealt in uh, detail so these uh, paralinguistic features of spoken speech such as tone pitch rhythm accent etc are also called sometimes as prosodic features so let's look at uh, uh, one or two basic examples so that we have a basic understanding of these uh, each of these things for example accent accent refers to uh, the way in which we pronounce uh, words so all of you know that there are different accents when it comes to english the british accent the american accent the australian accent right there's also something called the indian accent so which is not as standard as american or uh, british so do all words have different ways of pronunciation no definitely not most of the words in english have same way of pronunciation some words when it comes to the pronunciation for example schedule and schedule most of us think uh, one is right whatever we have learned schedule or schedule we think that that is right but actually both are right one is american one is a uh, uh, british so many teachers have confusion when it comes to pronunciation so which one do we follow american or british so no there are though there are no hard and fast rules to say which one is more standard or which one is meaningful uh, all the accents are meaningful it is just the way the pronounce uh, they are pronounced are uh, different but uh, uh, we can come to a general consensus that uh, uh, our education system being derived uh, having been derived from britishers uh, english is introduced uh, in india by the britishers our education system or judiciary system or legal system all of them are borrowed from uh, you know britishers and we indians are basically conservative like uh, uh, you know britishers logical or practical like americans we can say that uh, you know, we can follow most of the words when it comes to uh, pronunciation and the accent that we follow is uh, uh, british but for many words uh, now we have reached a stage where uh, uh, most of the words uh, have an indianized way of pronunciation a separate pronunciation so if you take the word like example past right so a britisher would say past as past whereas an american would pronounce it as past but uh, a typical average indian would pronounce it as past so now here you can see three different ways of pronunciation so the typical indian way of saying it past is what we refer to as neutral accent so the goal of teaching accent or pronunciation is not to follow american or british accent but it is more of deciding what is more used in our environment so if past is used by indian speakers it is accepted now the, here we need to go back to grammaticality versus acceptability so if you go by the standard you have to either imitate a britisher or an american and say past or past but uh, most of the indians typically would say past so past is now acceptable in what we call as neutral accent or general indian english as we refer to so this is uh, where we can use uh, the concept of uh, acceptability so past saying past is not wrong it is acceptable in indian english so past is fine but we have to make sure that sometimes due to regional language differences mother tongue influence can affect the pronunciation 
so past is still fine even if we don't say american or uh, british accents but uh, instead of past if you say for example in a, in a language if they say fur is a dominant language instead of past if you say fast fast it sounds like uh, the english word uh, f a s t fast running fast so it can easily affect your meaning so this is how acceptability can play an important role when it comes to spoken english or the way we pronounce words next is stress so stress is the degree of emphasis given to a sound or a syllable in a speech so how much stress is given to a particular syllable in a, a speech now example if you take uh, meat there's only one syllable so the uh, stress is given in the beginning of the word now look at the next example baba here we have two syllables bar and ba now a typical native speaker would pronounce this as baba baba so the stress is on the first syllable ba and the stress on the second syllable is a little lower and also another thing to notice in this example is a typical native speaker when they pronounce this word they would say ba ba so the r in the first syllable and the r in the second syllable both are silent ba ba but a typical indian would say barber so in an indian context uh, barber with the both both the r sounds uh, visible or uh, clearly felt in pronunciation is actually acceptable so if a majority of indian speakers pronounce it as barber it is accepted based on uh, acceptability but this pronunciation may not be accepted if you go and utter this word uh, in a native speaking english uh, country look at the next example abdomen all of you know this word abdomen so a native speaker tends to pronounce so the right pronunciation of this word the stress is given to the first syllable so typically the right pronunciation would be abdomen but most of the indian speakers have developed a neutral accent under which uh, this word would be said as abdomen do you notice the difference abdomen most of the indian speakers don't say abdomen as abdomen a typical indian speaker would pronounce it as abdomen right so this is what we refer to uh, you know variation variation in terms of uh, usage though what we have uh, what we call there is a standard of pronunciation when it comes to the actual speech uh, the acceptability varies from region to region depending on the way we use english next is rhythm rhythm uh, ismail sir i'll just need uh, Five minutes. Yeah, please. Uh, because, yeah, <laughs> we yes. So yeah, next is rhythm. So what is rhythm? English is uh, termed as a rhythmical language. Some languages are rhythmical. Some languages are not rhythmical languages. We understand the word rhythm better as teachers when we think about rhymes and poems, isn't it? So the rhyming scheme in the poems and the rhymes actually offers rhythm. So when the rhythm is followed. it uh, sounds uh, the utterance of such uh, language uh, the usage of such language sounds rhythmical so rhythm has to do with the effect the effect uh, that uh, is felt when we use a language but in general when we apply to speech uh, it is the effect of stress at repeated intervals of time so english is uh, considered as a stress timed uh, uh, language or considered to have stress timed syllabus we understand this uh, when somebody uses or pronounces uh, the language correctly if you are notice this example go and post this card at once right if you know the right way of uh, using this if you follow the right stress patterns this uh, sounds like uh, go and post this card at once go and post this card at once so carefully in the connected speech if you try to segment this uh, into uh, you know one stress uh, instance to another stress instance you will see that the time gap between one stress instance and the other stress instance the stress groups is equally the same 
so the time taken to say go and the time taken to say post this the time taken to say card it and then the time taken to say once all these uh, time intervals are same so this way of speaking uh, is common in english uh, and then this is what actually makes uh, english uh, uh, as a rhythmical language assimilation this is also an exclusive feature of uh, you know spoken english uh, where uh, the way in which uh, one word can change the sound of uh, another word how does this happen now if you see these examples good and boy if you say some separately good ends with a d and b ends uh, b starts with the b the sound b but when you in connected speech when you pronounce them together you say good boy especially native speakers if you see good boy right nice girl nice ends with s and g the girl starts with g but in the connected speech uh, right when you say it together the s becomes a z nice girl nice girl so this is how a sound can affect uh, the neighboring sound in the next word this is referred to as assimilation and this is very important when it comes to understanding native uh, uh, english speech that is why when we watch english movies most of the time most of the utterances appear new to us we can't follow it naturally that's because of lot of uh, assimilations and structures next uh, is uh, elision the omission of sound in uh, or a syllable in connected speech this is very common for uh, uh, when it comes to spoken english for example i am the contracted form i am so the a is missing here and let us in written english we use the full forms in spoken english we use the contracted forms so let us when we say the contracted form let's so the a uh, sound uh, represented by this u alphabet is actually missing waste of money if you separately say pronounce uh, off you say off fies felt but when connected speech when you pronounce this expression you say waste of money waste of money waste a uh, money if you separate a uh, the off becomes a uh. next pitch pitch refers to the degree of uh, highness or lowness in a voice so all these aspects make a spoken english different intonation is the variation of pitch for example in statements we talk about uh, uh, the falling tone right we are here we are here so in the beginning the tone is high but as we move forward the tone is lower next uh, shut the door command when it is a command shut the door so initially high and finally uh, the tone falls down right but when it comes to question the tone gradually raises shut the door shut the door so the tone this is how tone can actually change the meaning and lastly these are some uh, features distinct there are some other distinct features which make uh, uh, the spoken variety different dialect for example we already discussed about dialect it is uh, the distinctive way of uh, grammar and uh, pronunciation or speech Uh, which uh, changes which can change for one language from place to place and opening and closing spoken english normally has separate uh, structures for opening and uh, closing uh, uh, statements opening statements like hi hello how are you right so these kind of statements there are fixed structures which we commonly follow for opening as well as closing turn taking right in spoken english turn taking happens very logically and meaningfully as if if it is uh, pre decided by somebody speakers and listeners know when exactly to offer and also take turns adjacency pairs so adjacency pairs are like a fixed pair of expressions for example when you greet somebody it is often expected that you greet back right hello to hello and when you say how are you the answer expected is uh, i am fine a question to an answer when a question is asked you don't respond uh, by asking another question the answer is always expected as an answer this is what we refer to as adjacency pairs now back channels are expressions like oh i see aha uh -huh. so these expressions are used to support 
uh, what the other person is saying and telling him we are listening to you and when we don't know what to say sometimes we say and so on we don't know what next so and so on and on and on or we say whatever or sort of kind of right when we are not sure this is called vague language contractions as you know short forms can't uh, wouldn't uh, shouldn't uh, these are exclusive features of spoken english not written english and tag questions so question tags are also only an exclusive part of spoken english and not written english discourse markers because spoken english is not planned normally we make use of discourse markers like and so but these kind of uh, linkers are used or repeated a lot so all these distinctive features make spoken discourse unique so this is the last item in our discussion so having discussed all these different aspects of spoken english this is a very important term for us to understand grammar of spoken english so what do we mean by this term grammar of spoken english is this a different kind of grammar do we have different types of grammars is this different from written grammar so the answer is definitely no grammar is same the grammar is same for the entire language the only thing is now if you try to apply all the discussed about spoken english if we apply that now to this question or term we will understand how spoken english is different from written english when it comes to written english language alone plays a major role so grammar becomes very very important just like right punctu right uh, punctuation marks and right spelling is important in written english similarly what makes the grammar of spoken english is different is apart from language uh, right apart from language these features like uh, all these distinctive features which we have seen so far incomplete expressions uh, and vague expressions uh, false starts and uh, non verbal elements like tone pitch uh, rhythm accent etc so all these together right pronunciation all these constitute what is called the grammar of spoken english so when it comes to spoken english it is not only about grammar it's all about grammar even if it is a little less grammatical it is still okay so when we learn spoken english or encourage spoken english in our classrooms we need to take care of we need to be aware of all these aspects and see that we learn so the best way to learn spoken english that is why is uh, to expose ourselves to spoken discourses rather than written discourses this is the most important learning that i want you to take away from this uh, class so if you want to learn spoken english faster make sure you expose yourself to spoken discourses a lot rather than written discourses so with this uh, uh, i'd like to conclude my session and uh, we'll move on to question and answer session thank you all thank you mr can i stop sharing your screen Uh, here is a question, sir. Yes. Um, yeah, from uh, Nagalakshmi Garu, West Godavari District. What she asks that, what elements should we follow for primary school children, uh, either grammatically or accept acceptability? Yes. Uh, so th this is her doubt. That's what uh, she expresses. Yes, madam. As uh, madam, that's a good and very relevant question. Uh, as I said, uh, when we are at the initial levels of learning a language. whether it is our children or ourselves we should not focus more on grammaticality first as i said we should the primary goal should be fluency means we should encourage our students if it is goal is for us as teachers we need to make sure we are exposed to good uh, spoken discourses so that uh, we uh, improve the fluency if it applies to the classroom situation encourage our children to speak in english whenever our children speak in english uh, we should give prime importance to the sense or meaning rather than how grammatical they are because if we start focusing on grammar right from the primary level right this can actually cause create a language what we call language phobia among children 
if you start focusing on grammaticality right from the beginning students will get uh, indirect uh, uh, meaning that i am not good at english i am making so many mistakes in english so unknowingly we get into what we call as language phobia many teachers even now have this phobia knowingly unknowingly that is why even though they have basic english they they are afraid to open their mouth in a public uh, uh, place but the right way of judging somebody's uh, communication is by the sense that they make the meaning that they make not to what extent they are grammatical unfortunately uh, when it comes to english right uh, most teachers judge other teachers and other people by the amount of uh, uh, grammar that they uh, you know the, that somebody knows or somebody can use this is very unfortunate but uh, this should not be the case both for us as individuals as well as teachers thank you sir so yeah, i have a connected question with this yes sir. arundhati chamudur fluency and accuracy both are very important for language but for primary level which one is most important definitely as uh, as i said uh, fluency should be the primary goal for the uh, primary le- class learners when i say primary i don't really mean uh, first to fifth standard as we normally call primary when i say primary applies to the primary uh, uh, level of language proficiency in most of the government schools as i hear from teachers they say uh, the students in the high school uh, are actually uh, very basic when it comes to english so even if you are referring to high school students who are not very good in english who are very basic level they are also primary primary not in terms of standard or class primary in terms of language proficiency so when you are talking about primary learners whether it is your students as it is you your primary goal should be most important goal should be encourage fluency encouraging fluency means do not focus more on grammaticality do not look too much at grammar right so look at the meaning rather we have actually had two examples today right sample conversation where we saw how in spite of not being grammatical language can still carry forward the meaning because after all as we know uh, you know speaking is a skill so any skill the more you use it the more you develop it so being afraid of mistakes if you do not open your mouth then your language you will never improve so in spite of mistakes at any level whether it is you or your children you should continue to uh, use english only then will you attain fluency once somebody attains a, a basic fluent uh, fluency level then the focus can be shifted to accuracy thank you sir thank you yeah another question from uh, gedaluru prakasam district sir yes uh, um, what he ask what is the difference between proficiency and fluency yeah proficiency is a very general term which we use to refer to how good one is at a language so proficiency is not different from accuracy and fluency proficiency is the measure of one's uh, uh, language capability so proficiency is the more general term which can include both fluency and accuracy so the amount of fluency the amount of accuracy together decides the amount of one's uh, proficiency though we often refer to these as uh, uh, interchangeably we use them but this is the difference both fluency and accuracy go into one's measure of a language which is proficiency that is why we say proficiency test so the test is to measure how much knowledge do they have in the skills all the skills lsrw in knowledge and then vocabulary and as well as grammar which is a broader term thank you thank you sir Uh, another question karnam v prasad from nello is profici- uh, para linguistic features are not necessary for primary learners but it is necessary no definitely they are important sir para linguistic features including body language for example so whether you consider important whether we consider important or not for example body language when somebody is in the initial stages 
capacity of learning or using a language body language plays a very important role so of course body language is something that we don't teach students so teachers cannot plan for example today i will teach my students how to use expression how to smile how to use their body or how to use their hand gestures this is not something that they can plan students also when they try to communicate they naturally try to help the take the help of uh, hand gestures or voice or expressions to some extent but in this case i would say teacher should be a good model for uh, using appropriate body language when he or she communicates in the class so if the teacher can successfully use body language along with the language then students get good examples or good models so they pick up how to use body language this is one of the primary goals of being a language teacher not just using language correctly but also using uh, assisting it with appropriate body language that is about body language now when it comes to to voice prosodic features like voice rhythm accent tone same thing applies sir in the primary classrooms uh, most of the language uh, is not taught some of it is taught some of it is caught automatically which means our own style of pronunciation our own style of uh, using the language itself is the input for the student so if the teacher whenever he utters english in the classroom if the teacher uses proper right appropriate english that is an input you don't have to teach this so it is very important not from a teaching point of view the teacher has to make sure he or she uses all these features rightly with the help of training programs or reading books etc but whenever the teacher uses use it rightly so that students naturally pick up these things from you because direct teaching of this can happen only at higher levels not in the primary levels thank you sir you know sir do you have any questions with you yeah yeah uh, thank you uh, suman bandigaru you have explained everything well uh, uh, at the end i just wanted to uh, tell to our participant that uh, in abhyasa app you are writing assessments in the uh, 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 you know library section by clicking uh, spoken english and uh, you are finding the date and you are writing and similarly in the course section also we made a course on spoken english series and you can also enroll into that and uh, um, and you can do that same course the same material will be there in some of the phones the co course may not be uh, uh, you know supported but don't worry you can uh, uh, write in the library section and th th uh, that holds good well so uh, try to do uh, that uh, online course uh, it also will work after some okay thank you ismail please conclude thank you sir thank you very much Sir, uh, can I ask last question? Yes, sir. Sure. It's my question. I have seen persons, uh, those who are good at uh, drafting, written English, but they are not much uh, comfortable with spoken English. They face, uh, they are facing a lot of trouble to speak. Yes. Why is the uh, the variations in the different levels? Those who are good in uh, drafting, but uh, they are finding uh, you know, lack of vocabulary, the repeated. same words they when when they used to talk this is a that's a very good and very keen observation though it is a reality not many of us are actually aware of this uh, this can happen due to the kind of exposure the kind of practice one does uh, for example if uh, i am a user who uses uh, english primarily through the spoken mode i use as well as my modes of exposure also are spoken discourses then it chances are that i i develop my spoken english uh, you know uh, my spoken english will be better than my uh, written english but some people by the way of their profession uh, professional demands usually writing is actually a professional demand or a formal uh, demand so Uh, there are some people who will have to write a lot as a part of their uh, uh, professions in fact even if te if you consider teachers teachers do not write as they speak you know the writing that they do is only correction writing small remarks feedbacks for students otherwise teachers don't write uh, too much maybe they fill their uh, school reports which is a kind of daily routine 
but when you think of administrative staff for example administrative staff working in uh, colleges or uh, offices or various establishments their primary way of communicating is writing they write more than they speak and because these are standard contexts uh, most of the discourses right they prepare uh, records they write notices they prepare letters for communication all of these are very very formal in nature so they copy and they deal they write they produce they are exposed to similar stuff on a continuous basis so whatever you are more exposed to your language becomes that so that is why people who are very good at preparing drafts administrative clerks or people involved in administration may not be that good at speaking they, they might not have had exposure of uh, you know spoken english so it all depends on exposure and usage what discourses are you exposed to what discourses do you use on a regular basis thank you very much suman sir uh really uh, amazing presentation very useful uh, topic we had today i request all the teachers to go through the uh, video if necessary again and again and you can learn many things thanks for uh, sticking to us and uh, listening the uh, and watching this webinars on facebook as well as youtube so thank you suman bandi garu for nice presentation and uh, motivating us and i also thanks pokri sinwas garu for moderating this yeah, thank you sir thank, thank you very much we will come another topic tomorrow on the day 3 with uh, active listening listening for better spoken english by dr k n shobagaru stay tuned for tomorrow thank you